Thank you guys for taking the time to spend with the Rise fam. It's wonderful to talk to you too. Um, let me ask you a question. You guys have been a staple in the Charlotte nightlife scene for so many years now. Tell us a bit about how you got started and what inspired you to open up a 80s and 90s club. Okay, well, I guess, Don, I'll jump in with you first. I uh, actually started DJing in the 80s, so I'm kind of telling my age right there. So I um, uh, started DJing in the 80s, paid for college, and then uh, once I graduated to Wingate, I uh, was on the road DJing for a while and actually DJed all through the second half of the decade of the 80s and then all through the 90s. And uh, and uh, just kind of knew you know, the first club was Breakfast Club, which was all 80s theme, which was retro at that time. And then probably about the last two years of Breakfast Club, we started throwing 90s theme parties uh, on the weekend with with the 80s theme. And I said, that's that's it. That's going to be the that's going to be the next big next big trend. And then Julie is the 90s girl, so she grew up in the 90s as a teenager. I'm the 80s guy, grew up in the 80s, so that was kind of like you know Wonder Twins activate type thing. <laughs> that's awesome. Mm-hmm. That is awesome. Well, that's really cool. So um, inspiration came from you DJing around and deciding to break it open for the rest of Charlotte to have some fun, too, man. That's pretty dope. Right, right. And then, and then you know, Julie, Julie kind of, you know, she was, you know, kind of pushing me on the 90s thing, you know, uh, you know, like seven, eight years ago. And I said, yeah, I know it's coming. I know it's coming. And we're about there, you know, but you want to really feel like it's retro. You don't want to be, you know, be like, okay, we're doing a retro party. We're playing a 2010 tonight. <laughs> so, uh, but, uh, that was, uh, you know, and it, and it worked, it worked. And then now it's a, a balance, you, you know, you're trying to balance between, and then we noticed no one else was doing, I mean, there were, there were maybe, there was one 80s club in New York, uh, that, that I, that I flew out to look at when we first started, but that was it. I mean, literally for some reason, no one wants to do, people will do a theme party, but no one wants to dedicate the consistency of the entire club, the entire music format, uh, to those decades. Well, that's really awesome. I'm glad you guys did. That's a nice, bold move, and it's bringing us a lot of great times here in Charlotte. So kudos to the both of you on that one. That is awesome. So let me ask you another one. Walk us through a typical night at the Roxbury. What can visitors expect when they come see you at the club? Okay, yeah. So first first thing, doors open at 830. And when you hear a nightclub, say that you you're thinking what wait a minute people don't even usually get in line for a nightclub till 11 or after so we open at 8 30. so you know if you're if you're either catering to people that are uptown having dinner you know they can come in early i'm gonna i'm gonna play a lot of sing-alongs what i call sing-along not necessarily working a dance floor at 8 30 9 9 30. so it's kind of a warm-up social have some drinks check out all the memorabilia all the memorabilia in the club is original yeah. And once it gets too busy, you can't see all the memorabilia. So when you get there, if you get there at an early time, you can actually go to glass case to glass case and see all the original memorabilia. You know, about everything from back in the day. And it feels like more like a lounge club at that point. Right, right. So you kind of get the lounge club experience. We, we were the first one to do the, the old school arcade. You know, it's not as big as some of the ones that are doing it now, but it's, a, you know, it's, it's enough where you got, you know, ski ball, air hockey, Miss Pac-Man, Street Fighter, you know, so we, we, you want to have a, you know, so whether you and grew, the old photo booth. And the old school photo booth, so whether you grew up in the 80s or 90s, we're trying to take care of a, uh, you know, everybody on the arcade end. Yeah, so, um, so when you walk in, you'll see the bartender. Yeah, yeah, and then, and then of course, when you come in, uh, the bartenders, uh, the staff is going to greet you. The bartenders, um, I have had the bartenders wearing fanny packs for the last five years. All of a sudden, now fanny packs are kind of back. You know, so so uh, they're going to be wearing the neon fanny packs, and we sell those behind the bar, too, um, which people thought was kind of goofy three or four years ago. Now, all of a sudden, it's, you know, that's kind of one of the one of the fads right now. Um, and, of course, we have the patio upstairs. You can go outside and enjoy the patio. Uh, it's kind of a tiki bar feel out there. Got a skyline city view. Yep, you got the skyline view there. It's got reserved seating. If, and, yeah. if you want to do that, and like I said, you're just totally trying to get away. Uh and then once the dance floor opens, which is usually around 10 o'clock in that neighborhood, uh, depending on how fast things fill up, uh, then the downstairs will open. And uh, people will dance on both levels, but the downstairs is where it's supposed to feel and look like a dance club. So uh, that's where that's where you're going to get the, 
the smoke, the lasers, the mirrors. Uh, you know, the FX lighting, all the music videos, the smoke, neon bracelets, glow sticks. Yeah, we give out about three to 400 pieces of glow every night. And that's kind of one of our one of our little niches we do that, that you're not going to catch anywhere else. Um, uh, and now they expect it. <laughs> so when they come in, so i got to be ready for that every weekend. So with the two levels, the club feels like um, two separate clubs almost. Because upstairs, if you like that lounge dance feeling, you can do that. Or if you like that New York dance club basement feeling, we got that too. Mm -hmm. And then also downstairs, you can um, reserve a party room with a um, pool table that also has private access to the patio. And... Um, and it has another bar, another dance floor bar. So um, basically, the club is a lot bigger than people think it yeah. is. On the, you know, uh, it's spread out. Yeah. So yeah, you can do this. So some people like that loungy up feeling, and some people like that New York down dance feeling. Mm -hmm. So you know, it's just kind of two clubs in one. And then once you go outside of the patio, that even feels different. That looks, that feels got a Miami feel, but the skyline is beautiful. Um, you can also, like, have reserved seating for a birthday and bachelor parties. We got neon light-up seating. Um, so that's kind of like, you know, a typical night of how the night would start. And, yeah. It's and, and go very the, Yeah. 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 That's wonderful. That is absolutely wonderful. Now, Jody, in specific, since you're the resident DJ, how do you go about choosing the playlist for the night? Well, yeah, I – you know, and take a lot of pride on that. First off, I'm going to just put it out there. There's no computer in the DJ booth. So uh, if you're either going to hear vinyl on turntables or music videos playing on DVD players. And uh, even even some of the newer school DJs will come in and go, hey, man, how are you doing the music video like that? It's really 15-year-old technology. I'm actually playing disc, you know, and mixing the actual disc uh, with these players, these pioneer players. So I'll, I'll balance between vinyl. And then and certain things I have on vinyl that I don't have on music video. So I kind of go back and forth on that end. But uh, that's, you know, and night to night, you know, you're, when people come in, they expect to hear these certain songs. If it's, if it's in, and then we'll talk about the kind of the, the, the request you get on that end too. But I'm going to try to balance out the 80s decade with the 90s decade. And I play everything in sets. So if I'm in the 80s, I'm playing an 80s set. Then I'm going to go, and then someone will come up and say, hey, uh, are you going to try to get into some 90s? I said, yeah, I just, I just got out of the 90s like 30 minutes ago. I'm going back in here in about 10 minutes. So then then when you get your 90s, you get your 90s feel because that's what people want to get that. Instead of being – I'm not all – I try not to be all over the place. So, yeah, if I'm doing a, if I'm doing a 90s uh, hip-hop set, a rap set, that's what I'm doing. You're going to get that. And then I'm going to maybe segue into uh, – somehow get into the boy band. Uh, and then, then I may segue into the high-energy club 90s feel. And that'll be a 90s set. And, and, then, then, mm -hmm. and then also because your DJ booth is available to people. Yeah. And mm -hmm. it's in the middle of the dance floor. He can see what people are reacting to. Yeah. So because every night or different crowd might be different. This, you know, so some nights they want all 80, some nights they want 90. So he is visually watching what that crowd responds to. And that's how he decides exactly how to format the rest of the night. Mixed in with those songs that people expect to hear because it's a theme nightclub. Right, right. So there's ones, there's, there's the staples that are going to get played. And then, of course, I, the I, I encourage you, yeah, and I encourage the request to come in, too, you know, because it, you know, it motivates me as a DJ, too, not to do, not to be doing the exact same set, the exact same uh, each night. Yeah. That's wonderful. Cause that, it's amazing that you said that because that leads right into my next question about your tape <laughs> request. So that's pretty awesome. You answered that question. You like it. But, um, as far as you've been uh, DJing, what have you found to be, like, one of the top songs that seems to be requested from you now at the Roxbury? Okay, so, well, we're going to break that into decades. And when and asking that question is, okay, so, eight. Number one is going to be Whitney Houston, I Want to Dance with Somebody. And if, if that song does not get played in the beef of the night, meaning sometime between 11.30 p.m. and 12.30 p.m., I'm going to hear about it. So that's that's number one across the board in the last couple of years, and then of course followed with any Michael and any Prince, and then that's that's your eight. Uh, and then of and course, then like, uh -huh, like well, that. yeah, you know, like the Aha uh -huh, Take On Me, and I kind of call that the '80s MTV era. 
you know, so I'll do a set with that too, you know. Yeah, the stuff. MTV music video era. Yeah, where they where people really watch the new music videos. So then you go 90. So 90, number one, of course, is going to be how do we, what is love? Because that's the theme of the club. And uh, once again, that needs to be played in the beat of the night too, where you're hoping most of the people are going to be able to hear it. People ask for that over and over. Yeah, now. over and over. So, um, and I don't play a song twice in the night. And I'm not saying I never do it, but believe me, it better be one better get at 10 o'clock, and the other one better be about one or 1:30 in the morning. So, so the, the I never want anyone to be able to hear the same song. Well, he just played that song an hour, two hours. DJs are notorious for doing that, and it's one of my pet peeves. I won't do it. I've got 20 years of music to choose from. Um, yeah, so that's that's how we're going. Uh, with the 90s, then followed by boy band. the boy bands, Spice Girls, Britney, Britney. And then it goes from like to Tupac and Biggie. Tupac and Biggie. Mm-hmm. There you go. That's it. Yeah. So it's, that's it's a hard true, question right. to answer, right? It's a hard question to answer. You say what the most requested. So that's, yeah. That's kind of yeah. You're hot. Because I you know, there's so many different genres from like the 80s and 90s. They're all there, but some of them got a different feel. Mm-hmm. Of yeah. And you know, just when and just when I think, God, if I have to play Spice Girls one more time, but when I see the crowd response and the girls are screaming. And they're singing every mm-hmm. every word at the top of their lips. That all of a sudden. And we're sick of it, but we forget they don't. They right. haven't heard that since they're in high school. Well, I, I'm not going to say I'm sick of it. No, I'm just, I'm as a it. yeah, as a DJ, the staff, the staff kind of kids me once in a while. But you know, we're there, and 90% of that, I'd say about 80% of the people coming through there are either brain friends and people from out of town. They want to come see the place and do the place. And then of course we have regulars as well too. But I have to think about that's what they expect when they come in. They want those. Those, yeah, we those, think all oh, Britney, but they hadn't heard "Hit Me, Baby" one more time, and since high school, it's or, part of dancing in a club, or see a music video, or see a, yeah, <laughs> and, the, and the music videos are pretty cool with yeah. it. so you can dance along with. I mean, the that is the music videos are awesome. With yeah, it. so there so you go. You can, like in sync, bye bye bye. Like everybody does the dance with it. Yeah, that's good. That's very good, Julie. Yeah. And then of course it goes into the and then the Tupac and Biggie. Yeah. You got to do that set. That's awesome. That is awesome. Yeah. All right, man. Well, I know you guys, like I said, that's very dope that you guys have a completely absolute uh, <laughs> 80s, 90s flow to keep going right, all the right. time. And it's not just some kind of a theme night here and there. That's right. That's right. So yeah, then, so um, we won't go ahead. And, and also, Fridays and Saturdays is consistent both nights. So I'm I'm going to be juggling both decades, both nights. And I try to I try to go right up to 2000. That's my I go you know I kind of say this is what I use an I use this example. I go all the way up to Nelly. That's what I always tell people. Yeah, the first CD of Nelly. Yeah, so that takes you all the way to 2000, and that's it. Or like like Juvenile back that up. But it's it's right up to 2000. 99, 2000. 2000. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then it's done. Yeah. So we don't ever leave the format. Yeah, I try to. That's where I go to. When people say, "What do you?" I, you know, someone says, "Hey, can you play Beyonce?" I said, "No, but I can play Destiny's Child." Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we just never that's, leave the format. Yeah, that's awesome. That's really awesome. That's a way to stick yeah. to it, and that's what makes it so special. I, I love the right exactly, for that. You just took my quote away from me. I appreciate that. Yeah, thank you. That is awesome. All right, so do you guys have any upcoming special events that you like to share the details on? Well, we have a seven-year anniversary coming up the first two weeks of October. We don't know which weekend we're going to celebrate it. But it'll be the first two weekends of October. Uh, we'll do a seven-year anniversary, and we're, we're working on some celebrities and things like that now. But we have nothing confirmed. But so we yeah, promise so. it will be great. Yes, yes. And then, and then also in October, I think it's the 26th. We have our we we continued our Breakfast Club Halloween party. So it's going to be the 17th annual Thriller Bash. Thriller Bash, which is sold out huge. Yeah, that usually goes. Uh, biggest time. Halloween party, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so October 26th will be our uh, thriller Halloween bash, where we even do you do the thriller dance contest. Well, not, we, yeah. Uh, well, we've been doing it for 17 yeah, years. Yeah, yeah, not a contest, but not, but a. Oh, uh, well, we a used group. to pick the winner. We used to pick the winner. We did used to pick a winner. We don't yeah. pick winners now, but we get we play the music video of it. Yeah, so they write it at midnight, along, midnight, and we sit with that, and then everybody does the dance to the music yeah, videos exactly. at midnight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's the big niche that we have always stuck with. So now it'll be 17 years at midnight. That song gets played, and everybody goes thriller together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Mhm. 
That's pretty amazing. All right, so um, where can people find you online if they get looking for you? I'm going to let you your take over for that part. <laughs> okay, Brian, that's RoxburyNightclub.com for the regular website. And for Facebook, that's Facebook black, backslash Roxbury Nightclub Uptown. And for Instagram, that's backslash Roxbury Nightclub. Dope. And that's where you can find us. All right. So we'll make sure people are out there looking for you and following you out on those social media links and getting a party on like they should, man. That's Wait a minute. Hold on, Brian. I forgot about Julie. Come on. You forgot to hit him with the MySpace. I don't even know how to log into my thing. Oh, okay. Shut up. We did start my thing for breakfast club together. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> um, Love it. And then also the telephone number is 74375? 375 8090. 8090. That's amazing. All right. And you can send us uh, any questions straight up at info at RoxburyNightClub.com. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So we're gonna definitely make sure that gets out there. Hopefully, <laughs> all you people out there who have not had a chance to visit that club, you guys are gonna to want to go there and party out really hard. It is a wonderful place to be. Wonderful Thank you, Brian. place. Well, you guys, I appreciate the time. Just want to do something real quick with you. I love the fact of what you guys got going on. It makes me proud to go ahead and represent the Roxbury name and the Rise Up magazine. That way everybody can hear about it, come visit it when they come to Charlotte. You guys are definitely a staple here that everybody needs to come see and come check out. So we appreciate all the work that you guys do for the Queen City. We appreciate you all well. Yeah, we appreciate Rise Up. <laughs> We're all for it. We're proud of <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Me, West Mac and, I mean, we're all four Charlotteans, and and we're highlighting our city. So yeah, yeah. Congrats and we to give you give as well. Thank you so much, you two. Thank you. So before we bounce, is there anything else that you guys would like to say to the Rise fan before we leave? No, just um, Water you know, club. yeah, what, <laughs> just, <laughs> what, just, just come through any Friday or Saturday. Come through and uh, get your '80s and '90s retro. Wonderful. Well, we definitely that, gonna make sure that, it, that and that it has a friendly feel and not that like that velvet rope sit down like. Yeah, it's not, not, not pretentious, not real bougie. You can be yourself if I can still, and have fun. If I can still say bougie, can I say that? Don't say bougie. Okay. Don't quite bougie. <laughs> it's not. It, it's not. It's. I think it's the P word. I'm saying prestige. Prestige. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's not pre- prestigious. It's prestigious. Not, no, no, we are prestigious. It's not pretentious. It's not pretentious. <laughs> it's not pretentious. You can dress up in your themed outfit. Oh, you can dress up as an 80s, 90s, and have your themed party. We were voted best themed party again. Yeah. And just have the time of your life. And you don't have that look like somebody's looking at you or yeah. feeling at you. Just know that Roxbury has that local like that feeling of you can be who you want to be. Yeah, it's about having fun. It's and about nobody having fun. cares. Yeah. And it's about having fun, yeah. That's amazing. Well, thank you, too. I really appreciate y'all hanging up, hanging out and uh, hooking me up with the interview, man. All right, Brian. Thanks awesome. a lot. I'm rising up to meet the dawn again. This dawn has been. I'm lifting my hand to breathe in my own.